Welcome! You are watching this video because you want to see what course templates are available in D2L for CU Boulder. This particular template was made more for language educators, although other instructors are welcome to use this template as well. You'll notice that the home page is slightly modified. I recommend putting a virtual office widget up on top and you can edit that and make it yours for the future. This video will focus on a tour and you will have other videos on how to edit, make course copies, deletions, modifications, and other such things. I'm going to go into the content section, which is the main focus of this template. You will see a Start Here Welcome module, a Course Orientation module, and 16 weeks since that is the standard semester. Then you'll see a For Instructors Only tab. This is a draft or hidden module so students cannot see it. When you click on it, you will see a checklist of everything that you need to change to make this template yours. At the end, you will also see how to perform a course copy. For the most part, this template is made up of these modules and content items. Additionally, I've added a few rubrics just to give you an idea of how the rubrics work inside of D2L. In the first module, I recommend having a Start Here Welcome page, a syllabus, a virtual office, and a general questions. This gives the students the ability to go into the welcome area at any point and see the main things that they might need to reference. Start Here introduces them to the course content, the competencies perhaps of the course, the course format and a course tour, expectations, the technical requirements, a link to the syllabus, and how to get started. In the syllabus, I recommend updating your name, your email, and your office hours, and it is a link directly to the virtual office page. You'll also see the course syllabus here, and I recommend putting your PDF of the syllabus here. And it gives some guidelines for the course on classroom etiquette. Then you'll see the virtual office. I recommend using the general questions Whenever you have a student who has emailed you on the side, a question that pertains for everyone else. What I typically do is I copy the question only, and I won't say who asked the question. I put it in the general questions discussion, and I respond to it there. I may even tell the student that that is where I have responded. In general, though, I respond in both locations for the student to know. This allows other students to see the same question and it eliminates future questions, hopefully, in the email as well. Going back into the content area, you'll see the course orientation section. This is where I put tips for online success, things like plagiarism, the link to the CU Boulder student handbook. I have a discussion board guidelines, and this is something I would ask that if you're going to take over the, this template, Look at the, the guidelines and make sure that they fit for your course and for what how you teach. Make sure these guidelines fit for the way that you teach as well. I also have how to type accent marks on various computers. And what you'll find is that there are a listing of various accent marks um, not necessarily pertaining to one language. I have a link on how students can use D2L, what is a voice thread, and the PDF for the Yabla for students. Any other technologies that we have I'll be putting here as well, 
that students will learn how to use inside of this course orientation section. I also like to do like a scavenger hunt and that's something that I have listed here and this is actually a way that I have the students interact in D2L with all various types of assignments such as the discussion, the Dropbox, how to see their grades and I have all of that in here so that they can do these things like taking a quiz without them actually being worried about the exact grade of the content. In this section they're just completing these things and they simply click on the start in order to move into the instructions on making sure that they have their discussion posts and things like that. This template is used just to get started with a D2L course shell. You don't necessarily have to take everything that you see inside of this template and use it necessarily. If you like some of the template but you don't want the game, for example, you can hide or eliminate the game. And I'm going to show you that in a separate video. In week one, just like all of the weeks, you will see a week lesson, an assignment page, an assignment description page. Um, and then for the first week, I've included an introduction discussion. You'll notice that the way that I run the discussions, I post that they have to follow the guidelines that I've already posted inside of the orientation. And that's why it's important for you if you're taking over this template to make sure that you want all of the guidelines that are listed there or simply update them to fit the way that you teach. Now this template actually comes with four template styles. You already saw the one template style in the syllabus and virtual office, which I'm going to go back and show you one more time. And it kind of um, looks like it's coming from a desk which is why I use it for the syllabus and the virtual office. The other three templates that you see are going to be a lesson style. This is what I usually use for lessons or explanations of how to do things or I'm giving materials out. When I'm asking students to do something or play a game, I generally use this style that you'll see, which I call the assignments. The final template is the one I call the assignment description. And this might be something that you use like notes um, or descriptions of assignments. You can use any of these templates however you want to use them. So if you like just one of those styles, you can use one of them for the entire course. I'm going to show you in separate videos how to modify and take over content and how to make just one um, style or various styles. Before I do that though, I want to show you an edit course, the rubrics that are in this template. You'll see one for the introduction. I feel it's important for the first discussion to be in English, no matter what level of language you're teaching. And the reason is, if you're teaching online or a hybrid, it's good to have them speak in English in their natural voice. The second week when you ask them to speak, you're not wondering if that voice is too much male or female based on their name. In the first week, you already had um, an idea of what they normally sound like in English. The reason why I suggest this with the English um, first week discussion, when I was teaching online, I had a student that was a male who sounded like a female for his midterm, and I had a female who sounded like a male for her midterm. In both cases, I asked them to redo their audio and produce their audio within 24 hours. Both of them dropped the course. I suggest that you do this to help eliminate possible problems in the future. You also have weekly discussions. This is just a guideline 
And then I also have a presentation um, rubric for culture. These are just ideas on how you could use the rubrics. It's not necessarily something that you have to do. You'll notice I did this as if I was teaching online so that they do an initial post, then they have to post on different days, they need to use the target language, follow the discussion guidelines, and they need to reply by a certain date. Everything you see in this course template you can use if you want, if you need additional help with how to use it. I'm making some how-to videos and you can use those, or you can ask me at any point how do you get something um, in your course. I suggest if you're going to use this course template that you move it into a sandbox template for yourself, make the changes that you want, put in your content there, and then put it into your live course for the spring or for the fall in the future. Thanks for watching this video and let me know if you have any questions.